welcome back i'm bevan and in this video and actually in the next few videos we are going to discuss the importance and the concepts of performance metrics in machine learning or error metrics okay so um this is this is crucial for becoming a, mac, a machine learning practitioner we need to have ways of measuring how well our models are performing okay so for example just as you would be studying say uh, mathematics or physics you don't just come to the end of a semester and just pass you, you don't just go through till the next year okay but you need to be measured your you need to to measure your performance against some kind of benchmark against other students you need to measure uh, how well you performed, uh, how well you've improved from, say, a, a, an earlier um, uh, test or exam, something like that. Well, in the same way, if you are training machine learning models, fitting them, you need to have ways of measuring how well they are performing. Okay, so um, we are going to look at performance error metrics okay these are just kind of my own words but performance metrics error metrics and you'll see why i say the word error or i use the word the term error over here so what are these error metrics um, well essentially they are to compare okay listen the trained model predictions with actual observed data okay so you have your model, you make a prediction from the input data, you compare that prediction with the actual output, you, you're comparing, okay, I want you to get the idea here, okay, you are comparing the actual, uh, you're comparing the actual data to the model's predicted data, and you're seeing how, let's look at the second one, the closeness of your predictions, how close are they, okay, how well does your model predict the output compared to the actual output? Okay. And why would we want to use this? Well, if you are, if say now you have a, a neural network, a linear regression, support vector machine, random forest, you've got a, a number of different models. Okay. They're all being trained on the same data. Then you carry out these performance metrics you you measure them based on some criteria and you compare and you see um, which gives you the smallest error in in the majority of them okay so and then you would pick that one or you, even you would take a single model and vary that model's hyperparameters for example and then compare all the errors and the one with the smallest error would then be the uh, the model that you would choose. Okay, that's the that's the basic idea. Now I'm going to focus on error metrics for supervised learning. Okay, in this in this video. Okay, and if I can just find the side over here. Okay, so I'm focusing on supervised learning. And in this video, I'm going to focus on regression. If you've looked at the last few videos, you see, you saw that I've basically done, I don't even know, maybe four or five videos on linear regression. So a regression, remember, is a continuous problem uh, the, where the output is continuous. For example, a house price or your, your grades at school or anything where you've got a continuous output feature from 100 to 200 or whatever. Whereas classification, okay, classification is categorical a yes no a male female pass fail okay and this is much more complicated so i'm not going to touch on this right now okay your your classification error metrics are very much based on something called a confusion matrix confusion matrix which i will get into in, in some detail once we get to classification uh, machine learning but right now I'm focusing only on regression error metrics okay and I'm going to talk about some of the more common ones that are used the residual sum of squares mean squared error root mean squared error 
mean absolute error and r squared okay so for classification you can just look at accuracy sensitivity precision specificity f1 score area under the curve cohen's kappa breer score all of these are examples of classification error metrics which i will get into in a future video so let's look at these now residual sum of squares uh, if you've been looking at the previous videos i've gotten into this in quite some detail residual sum of squares remember is just the square of the residual and you sum up all the squares of the residual okay so remember if this the so if you've got y as a function of a say a single input x just to simplify things then remember if this is the real data then this data point is say x1 y1 and this is x2 y2 etc so there's four data points so if i my actual real data had an x value x1 there and it had an output value y1 okay and the same way x2 i put in x or the, my real data has an x2 value and a y2 value okay and so what am i trying to do in linear regression is i'm trying to fit a line i'm not going to go into all of those details but remember what is the residual the residual is the difference between my actual and my predicted so for example here's my line this is my prediction line this is my machine learning model okay there's my actual data so i put in x1 into my model and i so i put in right it goes into my model and i predict a y1 predicted and so the residual is the difference between this predicted value and the actual value so this is what you can see here y i minus y predicted i and you get those differences for each of these values okay these are meant to be straight lines straight up but you know my tablet is not very good okay so anyway guys that's my residual so that's why it's called the residual sum of squares or the sum of the squared residuals okay and this you use in least squares regression okay now what is mse it's mean squared error and it's the same as this except you divide by the number of examples so in this one you had four examples <clears throat> so you would just simply divide by that number okay then the next one is root mean squared error and by the way i'll touch on just some slight differences between them and why you would use them in a minute then the next one is root mean squared error now that is simply to take the mean squared error and root it the square root of the mean squared error all of these guys are different ways of measuring the closeness the error between predicted and actual all right <clears throat> and then finally uh, I'm grouping these not not finally but for this specific group I'm grouping uh, I'm grouping these together like this and finally in this first group we have mean absolute error MAE which is then what um, it is the absolute the sum right of the absolute errors and the mean of that sum so you take this error right all of these can you see they're squared all of these are squaring these errors okay this one you don't square it but you take the absolute value so it is the y actual minus y predicted so in this case y actual is going to be a smaller value than y predicted so this will be a negative this will be a positive that'll be a negative and that'll be a positive okay but what we do is we we get the absolute values of all of those we sum them up and then we what do we do we divide by n to get the average or the mean now i'll get to this last one of r squared in a second but i just want to talk a bit about 
these four, the RSS, MSE, RMSE, and MAE. Okay, why do we square? Okay, there's just a couple of things that, that I can think of. Okay, the first is that when, when the error is squared, it magnifies the error. Okay, so if there's, a, if, if there's an error, or if a larger error, when you square it, it, it is the word accentuates, it magnifies. It makes that error more obvious, okay, when you're busy measuring how well a line fits. So it makes it more visible, if you will. And the other perhaps obvious reason <clears throat> is that it makes it all the values positive. So we just saw now that over here, this, this residual is negative, that residual is negative, that residual is positive, that residual is positive. So if you're simply adding up the errors, you might get... You might have a plus and a minus plus minus and, and get very close to zero. Okay, and perhaps that'll be very difficult to work with. But so what it does is by squaring it, it makes all the values positive. And it gives us a, a, a tangible uh, number to work with when we are trying to change our parameters and reduce these errors. Okay, now these two, the next point is, RSS and MSE, residual sum of squares and mean squared error, are unit squared. What do I mean by that? Well, say now you've got, say now these output values are in dollars. Say now you're predicting house price. Then this is going to be dollars squared. Okay, so it's not, yes, you can use it, but it doesn't give you something very real that we use in our everyday life. Okay, but you can still use it, of course. Uh, but RMSE and mean absolute error, because of the way they're constructed, they give you the actual unit. So that might be a bit more useful or uh, cons uh, intuitive. That's the word, intuitive, because that would just give you dollars. Okay. All right. And finally, uh, the last thing that I could think of on these uh, four, one, two, three, four, is... Lower is better in general. Lower is better. So if you've got one, if you've got, say, a random forest model that gives you, say, whatever, 20, and a neural net that gives you 21, then because this one gives you a lower <clears throat> value, it, is, it has a lower error. The error is lower. So this one has performed better in fitting the data. Okay. Now, finally... The last error metric, which I'd like to introduce for regression problems, is something called R squared. Okay, what is R squared? <clears throat> the, the formula or equation or whatever you want to call it is 1 minus the residual sum of squares, which we already know by now, we just saw it, divided by the total sum of squares. Remember, the residual sum of squares is we're looking at the difference, the residual. The residual, which is y actual minus y predicted. So what does that look like on the line? Um, let's just go back up here. It's these. It is the difference between the actual output and the predicted, right? The actual and the Simply the difference between the actual and the predicted. But what is... TSS. TSS. I'm not going to go down there. TSS is that I equals 1 to N Y I minus Y mean squared. That's your total sum of squares. Okay, so your, your R squared value is then 1 minus your residual sum of squares divided by the total sum of squares. Put it this way. RSS is how well um, the variance from your predicted to the uh, to the actual data points, and your TSS is the variance of the actual data points about the mean. Okay, so I'm going to say that again. RSS kind of captures the variance of your 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 actual data points about the predicted line. And TSS captures the variance of the actual data points about the mean line. Okay, 
So sorry if everything got a bit confused and messed up. Uh, my software was crashing, but I hope you get the idea. Okay, so please make sure that you understand what that is about. And then the last quick point is that on R squared is what does it do? R squared is a measure of how much variance in the target feature is explained by the input feature X. Okay? So the, the target feature varies in a certain way. But is that variation, is that because, is that um, explained by that input feature? This is what essentially what R squared does. So you've got all of these different error metrics, guys, and uh, you, you can maybe ask and say, now, which one do we use? That is an excellent question. And in my limited experience, um, it is often better, especially when you come to classification problems, guys, especially with classification, it is better to sometimes use a few of them. Use, use ones that, that you can see maybe kind of contradict each other. You can see maybe this one has this kind of strong point, and this one has a different kind of strong point, and you include them when you are busy measuring. And it's possible, uh, you just go and look at um, research papers. Uh, it's possible to actually have, say, one machine learning model, and you measure it based on, say, four or five different error metrics. And then you, 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 you say the one that, that has the most, uh, is the best in most of them, would then be the model that you end up using for all future um, work. Okay? Does that make sense? Guys, if you like it, comment, get, ask questions, and let me know if these videos are helping you. Okay? All the best.